Okay. Well, welcome to yoga, friends. Uh, if you're tuning in online, uh, I am April. There is a dog around. Her name is Jezebel. Sometimes she barks. Usually she's fine. She's adorable and she'll probably crawl on me at some point. Um, today, I've got a block around just in case I need it. If you have a pillow or something, that could be useful too. We'll get into some poses where this could be helpful just to feel a little easier in the shape. Hey, babes. And then I've also got a strap. If you have something like a scarf or a tie or a belt or like an extra pair of leggings or something sitting there around, anything that's like flexible and fabric that you can use that um, you could hold on to your leg with. Um, we'll be keeping the swinging from the ceiling kind of limited today, but you might need those at some point. Today is November 8th, and yesterday we learned in the U.S. that we are no longer going to have a certain person as the president that a lot of people, particularly in this community, are really excited about. Um, and there's this sense of accomplishment that comes with that, but at the same time, there's like, oh, I'm going to backtrack. Like, you know how like when you first get into doing something that you want to be like really good at like maybe you're trying to like eat healthier or you want to like learn to play an instrument or like the first time you went to yoga class and you're like i'm, I'm gonna be so bendy and be able to do like 10 crazy chaturanga head handstand prep things and and then you go once and it doesn't quite get to the point at which you are all of a sudden a health food guru or a guitarist virtuoso and for some reason like you've never tried a handstand before and you don't get perfectly up in a handstand and it's like why is that like I really wanted it and I tried really hard why didn't I get there right off the bat well we haven't applied tapas at the very first instance of getting involved in something and tapas is the application of heat or the application of intensity and dedication to that which we are doing. Let some people in here. So when we go into tapas and the continuous application of heat and intention and dedication to our practice, that's when things start to build. You can't just walk into your, um, I mean, I'm, I'm losing people, I'm sorry. Hey, Lisa, you mind just waving and saying hi or popping into the chat or something just so that I know, um, I know who you are. I'm April, it's nice to meet you. I know you're connecting because there's internet things, but I just wanted to make sure that we, we could say hey, and I will get back to the Dharma. Sometimes I feel like I want to start on time with things and then I remember that I live on the West Coast and we all run on West Coast time here, so what does it really matter anyway, right? Okay, awesome. Hey Lisa, do you mind unmuting or just kind of like saying hey? Hey. Hey. I think I got it kindly. Okay, nice. cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nice to meet you too, Lisa. Welcome. Welcome to the party. Okay. All right. So, um, folks who just uh, ran in, we've got um, a strap that we'll use today. Grab something like a scarf or a bow, and then I've got a block. Um, I was just discussing how like we might want to like get into something and feel like we're going to get really accomplished at it right off the bat but we haven't yet like developed these, like this continuous practice in it. Have you ever heard that it's supposed to take about 10,000 hours of practice at something in order to, get, to become proficient at it or to master anything like an instrument or an athletic endeavor? And Sometimes you can hit these moments where you're like, oh, well, this is cool. Like, I just did this really great thing. I got this small goal that I had lined up for myself. And then you get kind of lazy about it. Or maybe like you tried and you didn't get that goal and you're like, well, now I'm just going to suck at it. Like maybe um, 
for those of us getting back to this, um, this a little bit of a political drama that I'm giving, in, but for those of us who are like, ah, Biden isn't who I wanted, so I'm just not gonna be that excited about things. And to that, I respond with Maya Angelou's statement. Oh, no, Angela Davis, I'm so sorry, Angela Davis. She said, you have to act as if it were possible to radically transform the world, and you have to do it all of the time. That when you stop applying the tapas, the heat, the intensity, the dedication to this radical transformation, whether it's transforming your world, your body, your mind, your health, your skill set, or if it's transforming the world, all of it, and uh, the sun's coming out, I think it's gonna go away again, so I'm not gonna mess with this, but you have to do it all of the time. You can't be complacent and lazy in a moment of victory or in a moment of defeat. You have to stay dedicated to knowing that this is my path, this is the direction that I want to go in, and it requires repetition. We call tapas chop wood, carry water, chop wood, carry water. Because you keep doing it. You have to do it every day or else you're gonna get cold and you're gonna get thirsty because you have no wood and you have no water. So we're gonna repeat a lot of postures today and we're going to keep coming back to this intention. And sometimes it gets like a little bit like, oh, what am I doing here? Why do I keep repeating this pose? And, uh, I have another response to that. B.K.S. Iyengar, he said, never the same pose twice. Like no matter how many times you do Janu Shirsasana, that one-legged forward fold, spoiler alert, we'll do that a couple times today. No matter how, times you, how many times you do it, never let it be the same pose twice. Always take that same amount of dedication and intensity and tapas to your practice because that is where change builds. That's where that 10,000 hours starts to come in and that's that radical transformation in the world that you are dedicated to all of the time. Every moment, every day, even when you think you don't want to and think you're not you know, alert or ready enough for all of the time, all of the time, all of the time. So take your index finger and your thumb together. I'm just showing my t-shirt here. You're gonna take the base of your thumb and bring it to the center of your forehead and brush outwards towards your temples a few times. And then starting at the sides of your nose, brush outwards towards your temples along your cheekbones. We're just kind of brushing any tension or residue from the day off of our faces. And then go from the temples down to your chin, tracing your jawline. And from the sides of your nose down to your chin, tracing your lap lines. Bringing your fingertips back behind your ears and massaging the soft spot that's back there. And working from the soft spot up towards the bony spot and then lift up from that point so that you get this really nice lift into your spine. And knowing that this isn't the only time we want to be trying to lift our spines, remember that you will have to um, cue yourself to this, cue yourself to this lifting behind the ears all of the time. And then relax your hands down into your lap. You can let the palms face up if you want to feel more open, if you want to tune in, maybe placing your palms down towards your thighs. Just take a few deep breaths. Checking in with your body, checking in with your head space, seeing if there's an intention that you can set, something that you want to return to consistently in your practice, reminding yourself that you want to focus on it all of the time. So that over time you make great changes, over time you amass the amount of hours and intensity into your practice that radical transformation happens.
another deep breath in through your nose. Big exhale through your mouth. Again, like that, deep breath in. For three, all. to open your eyes and take one leg. Maybe it's your right leg. You extend it out in front of you. Just leave your left leg folded in some way that's comfortable to you. I am starting off sitting up on a pillow, so if you find it difficult to fold forward, sometimes sitting up on a little bit of something can be very, very helpful. You're just going to start to draw your body over your extended leg, and you can bend it a little bit if that feels a little bit better in your body. Just don't worry about exactly how far you get at this point, knowing that we'll return to this kind of movement quite a lot. And then we'll go ahead and settle in here. I'm going to adjust my natural lighting as much as I can. Take a few deep breaths. On every exhale, allow your body to soften. Again, it's not about how far you get, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We just apply ourselves to this energy and this effort continuously, continuing to come back to it. Got two more breaths. Walk your hands back towards you. We're going to take these legs, we're going to fold them in, and then they're both feet are going to go over towards that right side or towards whatever side you were just on. And then you're going to take your uh, left hand back behind you, take your right hand over. If this is going well, you can take your right hand behind your back, and I'm going to hold on to my elbow back here. And you're going to go ahead and look down towards your left hand, letting the outside line of your neck relax on the right side. And if you feel that upper right arm bone dragging down away from your neck, you can also stretch a little bit through the front of your shoulder, but decide how much intensity you really need right now and only go there. You don't have to do all of the things all the time. You just keep that intention up all of the time. Okay, breath in. Soften something as you breathe out. Gently start to lift your head up. Unwind your arms. You're going to take now your left leg out, tuck your right leg in in a way that is comfortable to you. It doesn't need to look like me. It can be a little bit more in or out. And then you're just going to start drawing your body out over your left leg. When you start your stretches at the beginning of practice, don't worry about exactly how far you get. Like, it doesn't have to be your deepest hamstring stretch. You're just kind of waking up the body. The stretches you do when you begin your movement practice are really just trying to open up whatever space is already there. Back 
two more breaths. Soften as you exhale. And then start lifting yourself up. You're gonna take both feet and swing them over towards the left. So I'm just kind of sitting um, a little bit sideways, a little bit over onto the right hip. It's gonna to start to release the front of this right thigh. It's not gonna, or the left thigh. It's not gonna feel like a lot. I'm just gonna go into a real jump. You see, you might take a twist like so, or you might take your left arm behind your back. I'm kind of holding on to my elbow. And then that's gonna drop this shoulder down as I start looking towards the other shoulder, stretching the side of my back. difference between uh, like the amount of intention that we put into something and the amount of intensity that we put into something. Like here in Portland, like a lot of the marches and the protests were still happening. There were a lot of people that went out like every single day and that got really burnt out and then started to lose the intention and the intensity and their dedication to movements and changes. You can be dedicated in your intention actually act in that intensity every day and every time at every moment because it's never the same moment it's never the same pose sometimes we're softer with ourselves sometimes we push things a little bit more and we always have that same level of dedication to the practice take about two more breaths to settle into this with a little bit more ease sort of pillow, anything you were sitting on, go ahead and set that off to your side. I'm going to grab this and down onto my backs and then take the strap up above your face. Bring it a little bit wider than your shoulders and then turn your palms to face towards each other. If you have tight shoulders, if you're feeling tension around the sides of your neck or your chest, I'm going to bring your hands a little bit wider and feel free to bend your elbows. But Start off saying maybe around shoulder width apart. Then start pulling that strap apart and wrapping your belly down towards your spine. And then bring this to an intensity where you can still breathe, but you kind of feel some heat building, right? Keeping the breath, keeping some heat, as much heat as is good for you this afternoon or whatever time it is for you. And then inhaling, reaching the strap towards the wall behind you, not to the floor. Exhale, taking the strap up above your face. Inhale, reach the strap to the wall behind you, reach the armpits to the wall behind you, and exhale the strap up above your face. Do that a couple more times. I like to think of letting my outer armpits roll upwards, because I get a little bit more length that way. If you want to intensify this, you're going to bring your shins up so that they're parallel with the ceiling. And again, don't worry about how far down the strap gets. Reach it back towards the wall. Okay, about three more times. If that was too intense for you to lift the legs up, put your feet back down. One more. release your feet down. You're going to take your strap off to the side for just a moment. Bring your arms up and behind you. Maybe you grab posing elbows. 
or let your arms be out wider. If your feet are wider than your hips, draw your toes up to your shins and take both knees over towards the right side. Now your top leg, your left leg, is going to get the stretch in the front of that thigh. You want to get more length in the side body. Grab those elbows and pull them out farther away from your head. And if any of those was too intense for you, back off. Come back to your breath. About two more breaths. Soften into your exhale, relax your arms a bit, bring the knees up, and then start to roll the knees over towards the other side. Once again, reaching those elbows out away from your head. If you're holding on to them, if you've got the arms open, maybe you just relax the fronts of the collarbones. A little bit different sensation, different intensity. We're all stretching the front of the right thigh, really reaching that right knee away. Consistently coming back to the ground. your strap again and take the right leg up into the air wrapping the strap around the bottom of your right foot wrap your hands around with the strap so you've got your knuckles wrapped up and make this right leg straight and strong notice how my leg is not back towards my face it's not where my focus is it might go closer over time but we just want to get this right leg as straight as possible And then after you've been here for a bit, you're going to start sliding that right leg out. And it might only get like a little bit less bent. It might get also all the way straight. If your leg is bent, don't worry about this so much, this lengthening of the left leg. If your left leg is straight, really push that left foot out and away, even if that means your right leg is no longer as close to your torso. Once you get the leg straight, can you push out into the soles of both feet? And pushing power out through the ends of both legs. Big breath in. Big breath out. Relax your left foot. You're going to take both ends of the strap into your left hand. Put your right hand at your right hip. And you're going to start taking the right leg across the body a little bit. What you want to stretch is the outside of your thigh so it doesn't go very far, just over a little bit. And you're using the right hip to keep the, or the right hand to keep the right hip down towards the floor. Breathe in. Breathe out. Strap off of your foot, set both feet down, and start moving towards the left side. So you'll take the strap around the bottom of your left foot, wrap it around your hands so you've got that boxer tape grip, you've got a little bit stronger hold, and start straightening your left leg as much as possible. So especially if you don't normally think about straightening your leg, you might not always get it straight. Maybe like you think this is straight, but it's not. It's really bent. Can you just try to get that leg a little bit straighter? It might be kind of hard to do. It's okay for it to be kind of hard to do, and you can take breaks. It's okay to take breaks. Give ourselves a little bit of rest and then get back into it when we're ready. Start to extend your right leg a little bit further away from you. It can stay bent. You just focus on relaxing that right leg as you straighten your left leg. Or if the right leg does get straight, can you push out into the soles of both feet? Relax your jaw muscles. Let the breath continue. One more 
more breath in. Big exhale. You're gonna take both ends of the strap into your right hand, take your left hand to your left hip, and take the leg across the body a little bit, not a lot. If your hip's lifting all the way up, you're gonna push that hip back down with your left hand. Releasing the outer line of this left leg. Take two more breaths in this place. To a seat, extend your right leg out in front of you, fold the left leg in, take your strap around the bottom of your right foot and wrap your hands up and around it again. And this time, see if you can get your spine as straight and your right leg as straight as possible. So for some of us, the heel might float up off of the floor, but don't think of lifting it. Now just leave it right there and let your heart fold forward towards your toes. See if you can soften the collarbones out to let the heart lift up a little bit higher. Maybe the backs of your ears are now lifting up as well. Big breath in. Soften as you exhale. You're going to switch to the other side. So fold your right leg and take that left leg forward. Wrap around the sole of the foot. Lift your heart up. There's a lot of stuff. Do the chest again. One day I'll have of this Is your spine long? Are you still breathing? Are your collarbones opening? Are your ears lifting upwards? We've got two more breaths. Strong left foot, strong left leg. And then relax as you exhale. I'm going to set the strap off to the side. We're going to come onto our hands and knees. And on your hands and knees, take some pack of cow, just moving whatever way it feels into the two. You can do this uh, traditional cat cow shape where you round and extend your spine. Maybe some side to side movement feels good. Maybe you're feeling like a little bit of circling. Strings. If you often feel like you wish your arms were longer or your legs are bendier, you're going to grab onto a block or anything of a small shape like so. You might want to have that nearby as you go into some of the next moves. You're going to take your right foot forward, kind of replacing it with where your right hand was, and then take your arms up. Make sure that your hips are slightly in front of your back feet. If you're back here, and kind of dumping back into your hips, you're going to lose the stretch on the left side. So see, maybe you bring your right foot a little bit further forward. Maybe you interlace your fingers, lift the palms to face up, and then lift from your armpits up to your hands. Lift your heart right up towards your armpits. Back to the breath, so you're going to soften the muscles in your face. Exhale, release your hands down and take both hands on the inside of your front foot. What you might do is grab onto this block and then start to straighten your front leg. And it might be just straight-ish, right? Like maybe you just get it that straight because we're not laying on our back when you have the strap helping anymore. So maybe the leg doesn't get totally straight. But however straight it gets, once you're able to breathe there, Start reaching your heart forward. So we get the leg as straight as it's going to get today, and it's fine as straight as it gets today. It's great where you're at. Then you're going to get your spine 
as straight as it will get today. And it's okay if it's not a lot. Making these small steps, knowing that it's never going to be the same close twice. Next time it's going to be different. So one way I like to make sure that I don't have, I'm not kind of cheating the stretch in the front of the thigh, I look down and I'm like, if I can see my whole quadriceps, if I can see my whole thigh muscle, I'm going to just be able to move my hip a little further forward, which might mean moving that foot forward. And then interlace your fingers if that feels okay in your shoulders, press your palms up, relax the outer armpits forward, and then push your hands up. And you push your heart up. You lift your rib cage up off of your hips, off of your spine, softening the muscles in your face and your jaw. One more big breath in for your spine, stretch longer. Exhaling, taking the hands down in front here. Your left hand's gonna go on the inside of your legs just because you have more room to lengthen and get down there. The hips are a little bit wider, maybe more bendy. Maybe you grab the block for underneath your hands. And then you're gonna start to make that front leg a little straighter or a lot straighter or totally straight or something maybe in the vicinity of straight one day. Once you regain the capacity to breathe there and unknit your eyebrows, start sending slowly your heart further forward. to walk your hands back in. You can come back down to table pose at any point during the time that we're in downward dog. We'll see if we can stay up and down dog for a couple of breaths. If you're not feeling it on your hand, come to dolphin, come to table pose. But let's come up, curling the toes under, lifting the hips up, and then come back into that upper back strength of pressing from the outer armpits down into those hands, reaching through the fingertips. Your knees might be bent, but try to let your tailbone roll skyward. Relax your head and your heart with strong outer armpits. About one more breath like this. Big exhale. Then we'll all return down to a table pose. Maybe walk the hands a little bit further forward. Keep the heart open as slowly as you would like. Lower down onto 
your belly. Untuck the toes and wiggle the toes back behind you. We took a couple cobras, just nice and easy, lifting the heart forward as the elbows roll back. Exhale, soften down. Inhale, lifting the heart. Exhale, lowering down. Don't worry about how high you get. Think of opening the front of your heart. Just moving with your breath. Two more. Maybe you lift your hands up. And this time as you lower down, we're going to press back to downward dog. We'll come to standing eventually, so know that's where we're going if you want to meet us there, maybe a little bit sooner. If you're still okay in downward dog, I want you to release your outer calf muscles down. Lift your inner thigh muscles up. Push from your armpits down to your hands, and then relax the back of your neck. Keep pressing, good left side. Start bringing your feet towards your hands and your hips towards your feet. Take your time coming up to see you when you're high for your legs. And then once you get to standing, bring your feet in towards each other. We're going to take the hands, interlace your fingers, press your palms up slightly in front of your face. So this is like overhead luggage compartment, not overhead. Yeah. With those hands up in overhead luggage compartment space. Lift from the inseams of your thighs all the way up through your heart to your hands. Take a little side bend over towards the right side. Push down in your left foot. Inhale, come up to the center. Exhale, up and over to the left side. Push down in your right foot. Inhale to the center. Up and over to the right. Push down in your left foot. Inhale to the center. Up and over to the left. Inhale to the center. One more time each side. Push down into the left foot. Reach to the right. Inhale to the center. Get taller. Exhale over to the left. Push down on the right foot. Inhale to the center. Release your arms down. Lay your shoulders around a bit. Roll them forward. I'm going to come to take one foot back behind us. Over. Take your right foot back behind you and press down to the ball of your foot. So you're kind of stretching your foot down. Go ahead and lower the heel down and lift it up. Not flexing around the ankle and the foot. If it feels okay to you, you might also come onto the top of your foot. So you kind of roll up your toes or come down to the the, um, the toenail side of the foot. If this does not feel great to you, you're just going to stay here, just lifting that heel up and down. Awesome. Now you're going to take that right foot, step it up next to your left foot, take the left foot back, but we're going to use all the space we've got on the right foot to fly into an airplane warrior three. So I've got my arms reaching back behind me, my left leg reaches back behind me, and my heart moves forward. Now you don't have to go parallel to the floor, maybe you're here. Wherever you are, lift your inner thighs. It's gonna help to keep your hips in line and keep sending that heart forward. One more breath in. Exhale yourself back up. Set your feet down, wiggle out whatever that's sticking. And then you're going to step your left foot back again because now we're going to start doing that foot flexibility work. So I'm going to lower the heel down and come forward, lifting the heel up, lower and lift, lower and lift. So what we're doing is just kind of making the foot a little bit more flexible, a little bit more adaptable. When it's got a little bit more mobility, it can be easier to balance. The body can kind of fine tune all of those little balance moves and you might even come up onto the tops of your feet which is something we don't normally do so it might be weird weird is usually fine you're gonna be all right unless that doesn't work for you you just lift your heel up you can always try it decide it's not for you maybe not. now you're gonna come to stand up on the left foot take the right foot back reach your arms back now lift your heart up and out. Lift those inner thighs to keep your pelvis more balanced and then send the heart forward. It does not need to be parallel to the floor. Try not to lift your ears back and your 
shoulders. You want to send your ears out and away. Reach your tailbone out and away from your ears. Find your breath. Big breath in. Breath out. chair pose. You might step in one step, you might step in like five and like mess up and then find it again and that's all good. Try to come up in a chair pose, which is the hip back behind the knee. One more exhale, just feel those hips reach back. And then inhale, straight the legs, reach your arms up for that whole front body length here. Rest the hands down the front. Same thing, other side. Moving into warrior one. So I like to create kind of some space right to left in between the legs. Maybe even a little bit more than normal so we can really find the space to turn the pelvis forward. Front leg is bent, back leg not so much. Toes are up, arms are up. Or toes forward, arms up. You need better words for that. Lift your heart up. Try not to lift your collarbones up. Maybe you lift the corners of your mouth up. Reaching skyward. Take up lots of space with your body. Move into the air around you. Inhaling. Exhale, arms down, hands to your hips. Straighten the front leg, square those hips forward as best you can, and let the heart lead you forward over a pretty straight front leg, like more or less. Try to go for straight, even if you don't go that far. Relax your collarbones. Good breath in. Good breath out. Lift yourself up. We're going to bend back into the front leg. Bring your hands to your heart. Just because I feel like this is a little bit more connected, it seems a little bit easier to bring the body into one place when you have this gesture of connection. Go ahead and bring that back foot up. See how it goes. In a chair pose, feet pretty close. Hips are back. This is not going to be your deepest chair. But give one more exhale to relax your hips down further. And then feel the changes in lengthen and extend your body up. Stretching that front space, reaching into the sky. And exhale, bring your hands back down towards your heart. Step your feet about hip width distance apart. And inhale, and reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Now, if you're having a hard time bringing your hands down to the ground, go back and grab a block, bring it in. Maybe you have your hands on the block. 
or up on the tallest setting of a block, or the chair in front of you, whatever it is that helps you feel a little bit more um, easy in coming downward. And then you're going to bring the weight into your right foot. And you're going to take your left leg up and behind you, and you can have it bent like this. That's totally fine. The real work that happens in standing splits is really the torso coming towards the thigh because it's for this hamstring. Now, if you can get your left leg straight, great, but try not to fly those hips open, right? And try to lift the inner thigh. And then start bringing your torso closer towards the leg so you can get that other leg up higher. Oh, man, carpet is hard to balance up. Okay. It doesn't matter how high this leg gets. Can you really connect your body down with your standing leg? Oh, balance is hard right now. One more exhale. Let both feet down. Bend your knees, wiggle your head around, your neck, your shoulders. Yeah. All right, well, maybe the next side will be my side because I don't think that one was. And it's okay if this leg is bent. You're just going to lift it up. Maybe the leg is straight, and that's fine too. I'm going to try to bring your torso down. Oh, yep, yeah, this is my side. Very different. I want to feel my inner thighs lift up. The hips don't have to be totally square, but I'm not totally open, right? You want to bring your torso down towards your standing leg. Exhale. Put the foot down. Wiggle things. And then come down to a seat. Good. Okay. So we're going to come into a couple of really big hamstring stretchy shapes, which have a lot of the same principles that we've been working on. We've been bringing the body close to the thigh, lifting and extending the spine, stretching out those hammies, continuing to apply the same things, we'll see what happens over the course of our practice. So if you find it really easy to hold on to your foot and extend your leg, you don't need the strap. Even if you think you don't need the strap, maybe you try the strap. I'm going to bring it in really close to my foot, even if I know I'm going to need to lengthen it, because it's way easier to do this than it is to like do this while you've already got the foot here, right? So I've got my left leg folded in a way that's just comfortable to me. It's just tucked in, just make it easy on yourself. Hold really close to your foot. And then we're going to start with what we just did in standing splits was to bring the torso up towards the thigh. And then from there, don't think about your leg getting necessarily straight. Can you let your foot extend away from you like a bird taking flight? And then keep the heart lifted, that puppy bird chest, all the bird poses, puppy bird chest. And this hair in pose. Maybe you do grab the foot, maybe you don't. Release your heart up and forward. One more inhale. Relax the leg. Draw it back in. Set it down. And start to move towards the other side. So maybe just start with the strap just to see. If you don't need it, you just grab the foot. It's up there, right? Let's start just this leg is folded in a way that's easy on your body. And then take and hold on to that strap. And length it. So if I have it up here and I really need it to be up here, now I can slide my hands out. And that's just what you do. If you want to grab onto the foot, don't grab onto the foot and let yourself be back here. There's no puppy bird chest there. There's no power and pump and circumstance. I want to lift the heart up towards the foot. But yes. And Jessica likes this one. Now lift your leg up. Inhale, feel your heart lifting up and forward. And then exhale, softly bring it back in. We're going to come into a lunge. Here's where I said if you might want to have like a pillow or something around, if you've got a big pillow, if you've got blocks, things around you, because there's a lot of different ways that we can get into Hanumanasana which I prefer to say over splits because Hanumanasana, we don't maybe have this connection with anxiety or flexibility being necessary with. When we come into the shape, you might use like a, a pillow or something to support your back knee, or you can make a pillow underneath 
your front leg so you don't have to go down quite as far. My right leg is significantly less stretchy in this pose, so I might not go quite as far. You're going to come down to have your front leg straight and your back and your set. You might start taking your leg forward. And then try to come up onto your fingertips. And this could be your Hanumanasana, this could be your split. And then you're going to send your heart forward. Maybe you reach one arm up. If you're feeling really tender in your hamstring, don't worry about going any further forward. What you might do is take the arms up, reach your heart up towards your hands. Big inhale. And then take it on down. Cool. And start to bring your right leg back. So there's all kinds of ways that we can support you. Start to let the back knee down. Maybe you have like a block down underneath your left leg and kind of come to a place where the block supports that thigh. Take some time, stretch them out, maybe slide that foot out further forward. Ooh. Eventually, maybe you set the block lower. Or it's not there, and if you're not there today, that's fine. You're less on the fingertips. Maybe you think of the heart lifting. Maybe one arm lifts. Maybe both arms lift. Maybe they don't. It's fine. See if you can lift the heart wherever you're at. And soften. I'm going to bring both legs back and coming into child's pose. Knees open, toes towards each other. Hands walk out in front. Relax your outer shoulders. And walk your hands over towards the left side, feeling your right side stretch out. Release your hips back. Take two more deep breaths where you're at. Feeling your hips reach back and bring your hands back in and come on up to a seat. We've been doing a lot of hamstring opening. We've been applying ourselves to this action quite a lot. If you're feeling tender in your back from any of this, if you're feeling extended in your hips, or you just know that you really like to sit up on a pillow or a block, whatever it is, and come back here. Take one leg in, send the other one forward, and then come into a fold. And once you get to a place where you feel a little bit of things, stay there. Relax, let your heart melt forward. And see what else starts to open up in this space. We've gone at this very intentionally. We've gone at this using straps. We've gone at it using breath. We've been standing on it. Lion like Hanuman rescuing Lord Rama by grabbing the entire Himalayas because we couldn't figure out what the magic plant looked like to save him from poisoning. It's a long story. I probably shouldn't bother with it. The Hanumanasana shape is this giant leap of faith. Don't shut up. I love that shit. <laughs> gets poisoned and they're like okay who's gonna go up to the himalayas and save lord rama and hanuman's like i mean sure and so
So he goes up there and then he realizes he doesn't know what the magic plant that's supposed to save Lord Rama looks like. So he grabs the entire Himalayan range and just like picks it up and jumps back to South India with it. Like, I hope it's in here, guys. My version of the story. <laughs> Hell yeah. Always honor the story. Hell yeah. Big leap of faith, right? Like to even think, like mm, maybe this pose is all right. Maybe this yoga practice is all right. Maybe we're gonna be all right. I don't know, but <laughs> you have to act like you're gonna radically transform the world. Like you're gonna save Lord Rama. Like you're gonna make it back to South India all of the time. All of the time. different levels of intention and intensity that we've given to these hamstring stretches today they're all doing the same sorts of things they're all helping us to release and lengthen the back and release and lengthen the backs of the legs and they do necessarily all happen in the same way every time but we still have that attention and intention have to do it the same way with the same intensity every time but always have that intention in the backs of our minds. Approaching different situations in different ways but always coming at these things with that deep awareness, connection, and compassion. You're going to take both legs up in front. If you're sitting up underneath them, go ahead and step that off to your sides. You're going to take your hands behind your back. Let your fingertips face mostly up towards your hips. Some of us have tighter wrists and you might want to have the hands facing out, but don't have the hands facing back. So at least sideways as much forward as you can. And then you're going to push down in your hands. Start with your elbows bent. You can really feel your heart pushing up and forward. And maybe you stay here because you know you don't want to put that much um, pressure on your wrists. That's all good. If you do want to go a little bit further, you're going to put now pressure down into your feet and into your wrists, lifting your hips up. And once you get your hips up, sometimes the heart softens. Feel let the heart soften. Lead with the heart here. Press it skyward. Feel your inner thighs lifting up into your hips to get them higher. One more breath in. And then start to soften your hips down down onto your forearms. So same kind of attitude in the heart here where it's leading up and lifting forward. You want to open those collarbones. If your head going back feels good to you, go for it. Mine doesn't. I like to keep it on the spine. Sometimes legs out is good. Sometimes we prefer to have the feet in. Gently check out each side if you're not sure which works for you. You're ready to take your last breath and feel your heart opening higher. And then start to relax your heart down, elbows out, come down onto your back. And reach your arms back behind you. Maybe you interlace your fingers and press the palms back to the wall behind you. It's fine if they lift up off the ground. Toes forward, feet back, get as long as you can. Take a big breath in, fill your body up. Relax as you exhale. And one more time. Inhale, pressing out in all directions. Get long, strong, powerful. Fill yourself up. Exhale, let it go. And then slide your feet in 
heels coming up close to your hips. Arms down by your sides. You're gonna wiggle your arm bones underneath your back so it kind of gives your heart a little bit of a boost. You can always hold your palms onto the floor, grab the sides of your mat, or maybe as you lift your hips, you hold hands under your back and then you can wiggle your arm bones in a little bit more. Now your feet are pressing down. Your knees are a little bit apart. Your feet are a little bit apart. Everything's lined up in the toes and the knees. Lift your inner thighs up into your pelvis. Reach your knees forward. Feel your heart floating up into the front of the rib cage, much like those last two heart openers. Push down until all four corners of your feet come back to your breath. It can be kind of scary to open up the heart in these spaces. Can you still find a steady, nourishing breath in these spaces? One more big breath in. Relax your shoulders, your grasp. Slowly take the hips down onto the floor. Knocking around side to side. Your knees out wide. Reach up to grab onto your shins or your ankles or the outsides of your feet and happy baby. Finding stillness if that speaks to you or rocking around a bit if that speaks to you. your right arm so you can kind of wiggle your rib cage over towards the left a little bit more and then find softness in this twist if this is too close with the legs and the torso just bring those legs further away maybe you separate the legs a little bit so it's a little less intense find a level of twist that feels good in your body a place that you can settle into your breath to release control over everything that's happening. Committing ourselves all of the time to a deep intention, a powerful transformation doesn't mean we can't take breaks. It means that breaks are necessary. We don't let the intention go, we let our intensity go. to you, maybe a little bit wider than the hips and let the knees mount against each other. And I start most practices with face brushing, like we're kind of brushing the day off of ourselves and removing any tension so that we can start practice with clarity. What we can also do is end practice with clarity because even if you're like, oh, I love yoga and everything's great, and I love hamstring stretching, sometimes we have like 
responses to that, you know, like maybe it didn't go as the way that we thought it would. So let's end with face brush. You take your index finger and your thumb together and squish a spot at the bottom of your thumb. Just brush from your temples to your, from your forehead to your temples a few times. And then from the sides of your nose out to your temples a few times. From the temples down to your chin. From the sides of your nose down to your chin. And letting your hands rest down by your sides, palms facing up. I like to give a soft wiggle of shoulder blades just a little bit close together, just enough to allow some free open space in front of the heart. You can leave the knees bent or start to extend the legs out towards Shabbat. Shavasana is the rest, just really matter exactly what shape your body is in. Maybe you curl over onto your side or slide your legs up the wall or on the couch or take a seated meditation. Just any place that you can come into to pause, to surrender. Allow yourself to recuperate and restore.
intentions that you have set and that you have returned to in this practice and all practices. Knowing that we must continue returning to these intentions in this work because it is possible to radically transform the world, but we have to do it. over to one side offering yourself this moment of softness and also of gratitude for coming to your practice again and again chop wood and carry water chop wood and carry water come on up to your own version of a comfortable seat bring your hands to your heart Bring your heart lifting, bring your heart opening. And with goodwill and compassion and all of these intentions for radical transformation over all of the time that we will give to it. Take a deep breath in for all. Let me know if you need anything, if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, uh, music requests, body requests, anything. I appreciate you being here. Cool air, cool air, cool air. Thanks, Bob. Yes. Thanks, Bob. Awesome. Yeah, let me know if you need anything. Um, the PayPal and the Cash App and the Venmo and stuff, if you happen to be able to set aside um, a couple bucks, I appreciate it. Another time that's also fine, you being here is what's most important. Us all being here together and doing this practice is what's most important. So. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks for being here. Good to see you again. The perfect days. Yeah, I'm Victoria Marco. Take good care. Keep eyes open, hearts open. The what? That and weapon refills. Oh yeah. You wanna do that? We can yeah. do that. Oh man, that would have been really good to take us into the hamstrings and the quads, and I wasn't <laughs> even thinking about it. Let's do it. Yeah, I think cool. I'll throw that in there. Thank you. Thank you. I love the request. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Bye, everybody. Have good days.